It's a fact that right now is the most vulnerable our minds have ever been throughout human history. And this will only get worse. Our minds will only become more and more vulnerable. This is because we're exposed to so much noise, so much opinion and imagery. Things that the ancient Greeks and Romans would never have experienced in a whole lifetime were exposed to in one day. And the problem with this, if you have not developed your own core principles, your own standard, your own guide, then it will be developed for you by the people that run the systems, the puppet masters. And you become a puppet to these people. They tell you what to want, what to desire, how to behave, what to like, who to like, what not to like, what to pursue. So if you don't have a core belief system, a guiding principle, then someone else will guide you. You'll be dragged by fate rather than led by fate. So why Stoicism? Well, the true answer is it doesn't have to be Stoicism. It can be any core principle, any belief system that can ground you, can stop you being dragged by fate and stop you being led by the evil, the wicked, the clever, the people that take advantage of all this noise and can move the crowds of sheep, as it were. But the reason why Stoicism is because I think Stoicism is the ultimate blueprint, the shortcut from going from a sheep to a leader. And using Stoicism, you can get yourself out of this crowd. You can defend your mind against these attacks. You can become invincible to these attacks. And moving forward, you can help others clear their mind and become invincible to these attacks so that your community and the people around you and yourself are strong characters that lead themselves rather than being led by the general noise. So why Stoicism? Why is Stoicism the best guide? Um, well, to first understand this, you have to understand the journey of Stoicism. So Stoicism started around 300 BC. There was a man named Zeno of Cetium and he was a wealthy merchant. He was carrying a red dye and it was his life's work. And once he would deliver this dye, he would be even more wealthy. Well, fate had it that a violent storm overcame his ship and he lost all of his cargo. He washed ashore with nothing. And he went on to a bookstore, read Xenophon's memorabilia of Socrates, learned about Socrates and asked the bookstore owner about men like Socrates. The bookstore owner pointed to Crates, the famous cynic at the time, and said, that is a man like Socrates. And it was this encounter with Crates that led Zeno to start his own philosophy. Zeno, from this shipwreck where he lost everything, he turned it into a positive in his life. But he developed his own blueprint, this incredible standard, this incredible guide, a way of living, which didn't have a name. And he went out in the, into the public, into the agora, under the Stoipokale, which is where Stoicism gets its name. And he taught everyone this blueprint so that they too could live this great life, become a great character. And it's a time when philosophy, like now, was reserved only for the rich and elite. You know, the rich only have access, only the rich have access to these lectures and online courses and university. At a time where you had to be elite to have access to this knowledge, Zeno went out into public teaching everyone um, it didn't matter your background, you had this access to the blueprint of life. And these are the people that needed it most. And these people started to feel the effects of Zeno's blueprint. 
the merchant's blueprint had helped crowds and he became very popular. And soon this philosophy that he taught, this blueprint he gave out, became known as Zenonianism, which was dropped after a short while because people didn't want to create a cult following. So it became Stoicism, named after the place where he taught under the Stoapocle, which translates to Painted Porch. Then, a few hundred years later, after Zeno's death, a man named Epictetus, who was a Greek-born slave in 50 AD, he learned about this philosophy, he learned the blueprint from the merchant, and he went on to develop himself. He developed this blueprint himself. He went from a slave to become a philosopher. He was freed and became a very renowned philosopher. Uh, known for his practical take on philosophy, where most philosophers would sit reading books, um, pondering, thinking, talking. Z Epictetus would go out and put philosophy into practice. And his teachings only survived because of his student, Arion of Nicomedia, who was a very famous writer, a very renowned writer. He wrote down Epictetus's teachings, and they survived. Which leads me to Marcus Aurelius, who learned from Epictetus. So Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, the last great emperor of Rome, from his birth was molded by philosophy, molded by the greatest minds that Rome had to offer. They shaped him into the philosopher king. Most notably, he was taught Stoicism, and through his life, his difficulties as the leader of Rome, he suffered many great defeats, many losses, the death of seven of his children, countless of his own people due to the Antonine Plague, the Marcomannic Wars. Um, at a time when the Germanic tribes were invading, he was on the front line leading battles. He was also leading his people. He was a very beloved leader and a very respected leader, especially on the battlefield. But he took these teachings, adapted them, molded them to his life, this ever-changing philosophy of Stoicism. He shaped them to his life and he wrote them down in a personal diary. Um, and he would read this diary, learn from his own teachings and write down more teachings to guide him to be the great man, one of history's greatest figures. And now that book, after his death, um, someone took it and published it, and it became, thousands of years later, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest pieces of literature um, that exists, and arguably the greatest self-help book there is. So, these great figures and the people that were past Stoicism down in their life. They shaped it and molded it to their environment. They used it and adapted on it and then shared how it helped them, how it can help you. And eventually it built and developed into something different until we have what is now known as modern day Stoicism, which is what I'm teaching. And times are different now. Um, the rise of social media and news has changed us. The rise of consumerism has changed us. Uh, we are shaped by media and consumerism and the crowd. So Stoicism has to change and adapt to this. But I think it's incredible that it survived for all these years, growing and changing from the blueprint of a merchant to a slave turned philosopher to the great emperor of Rome, passed down through centuries and generations, and now it's reached us. So that is why Stoicism. You can use any belief system, any guide, but Stoicism has been molded and shaped for thousands of years by history's greatest figures. And they've proved and tested it in their lives, shown how it works for them and how it works for others. So now we have the new age of stoicism that can help you in your life. But that's not the only reason why stoicism. 
Number one is, Stoicism is very simple. The Stoics liked to keep things simple. They used a laconic style of speaking, which means few words, um, less emotive. They're not trying to hide anything or portray anything with a pretty curtain. They're not trying to be all flashy and bold to attract your attention. They're just giving you what will help you, what you need. Whereas at the time, the sophists would give great speeches and persuade the crowd that way, while the Stoics would speak simple to them, explain things so that they could understand and take those teachings to adapt into their life and become the best version of themselves. Well, it's remained that way. Stoicism is very simple and you can learn it in one day. Within one day, you have this belief system, this guide that can help you in your life and defend you from what I said at the start is the puppeteers, the leeches, the villains, the bad people that will pry on your vulnerable mind and they'll tell you what to do, how to think, how to feel. So that leads me to my next point, a tricky word of stoicism, eudaimonia. It's one of the few words that you won't have heard, but eudaimonia just translates to human flourishing. It means it's you when you're at your very best. And eudaimonia is achieved when you live in accordance with nature, you focus on what you can control, and you take responsibility. So what's incredible about Stoicism is that was the ultimate goal. So the great emperor of Rome, Marcus Aurelius, man that had wealth beyond your imagination, power beyond desire, he had the same goal and aspiration as a former slave turned philosopher, Epictetus, they were trying to achieve the same thing, this eudaimonia, this human flourishing. So that was their ultimate goal. So in their eyes, you're equal because anyone can achieve eudaimonia. It's a very simple thing and it can be achieved right now once you decide to follow the rules of the eudaimonia triangle, you can achieve eudaimonia and you're living what they consider the good life. So my next point is that Stoicism is for everyone. There is not a person that can't benefit from Stoicism or understand Stoicism. And Stoicism started, like I said, at a time when philosophy was reserved only for the elites and wealthy. Zeno taught everyone Stoicism because he believed everyone could benefit from it. And that's why I started The Everyday Stoic. It's Stoicism for all. And I try to keep things simple so everyone can understand the great benefits of Stoicism. So, I'm not saying you need Stoicism. I'm saying you need a belief system, a guiding principle, core beliefs that you can stand on this foundation so people can't just pull you under and lead you whichever way they want. You have a foundation to stand off and you can actually pull people up so they can stand on this foundation with you. And from there, you can develop your own belief system. But Stoicism is the shortcut I think it's the best guide, but I may be biased as a teacher of Stoicism. All I'm saying is take this guide for now, build your foundation, stand on it, and then you can start to develop your own system. But the Stoics believed in the four cardinal virtues, justice, courage, wisdom, and temperance. And justice was considered the most important. So you have courage, wisdom, temperance. So you're brave, you're wise, you're patient, but without justice, all this can be selfish. So justice is important because we have this and we share our help with people. We be fair with people. We use our courage for others. And that is why stoicism is needed right now to help people, to help people help themselves. So, that's a long way of saying why you need Stoicism. It's to help you not be vulnerable, it's to help you stand up and be a leader. Because ultimately, people think that Stoicism is a selfish philosophy about being cold, harsh, rugged, strong, independent, the island. The Stoicism is actually about, it is about being strong, but it's about being strong for others, not just for yourself. It's about being a leader for others. It's about understanding your emotions, not oppressing them. It's about 
being a good person and living in accordance with nature, ultimately. So that's why stoicism. Okay, I tried to do this all in one take uh, for the top of my head, so hopefully I didn't stumble too much on my words. But thank you for watching. Um, I say this in all my videos, if you make it to the end, I have a little um, a little thing I like to do with the people that make it to the end because according to analytics, when I first started this, 0.1% of people actually made it to the point where I would speak. But if you made it to this part, comment on the video, stoicism, and then I'll understand that you paid so much attention right to this very point and um, it helps in get engagement on the video, it helps me understand that people are making this far and it's just a bit of fun. Um, I like doing it and I like replying to everyone that comments that I'm amazed in previous videos how many people have made it to the end, especially some of the videos like an hour long and you get the last minute at the end and you reply and comment that you made it that far. So thank you and thank you for all the YouTube members and subscribers and people sharing the videos and all the people following on Instagram at the everyday stoic at William Mulligan Rubber. Um, if you want to become a member you can join below there are membership perks and if you want to support what I'm doing then please consider buying the Memento Mori life calendar. It is a calendar which counts down the day weeks of your life you fill in one of the squares every square you fill in is a week of your life gone I can say from personal experience first firstly every time I fill in a square it creates an urgent feeling and gratitude and a zest for the time I have right now as soon as I fill it in I go that's a week gone right let's learn from the mistakes I made that week learn from what I did right and let's let's do this right let's be present and be good. The second lay, when you can just see your calendar just on the wall and you look at it, it just reminds you to be present, to be grateful. Um, because all the black filled in is the past. You can't change it, it's gone. And all the white that's not filled in doesn't exist. It's the future. Um, it may never happen. And every time I tell people about this calendar, they say it's very morbid. But once you start to use it, everyone I know has said that and then start to use it, they go, wow, um, William, I can't believe this calendar. I, I've got such presence and gratitude and zest for life. Because people don't understand that about stoicism. Is it creates such a zest for life. So you can get 10% off on the calendar with code Memento Mori. Um, I think it will help you. It's helped me so much and help people I know. And it does support what I'm doing so I can make more, more videos. Not like this video, or I will make more videos like this, but videos like where I interview Master Shi Heng Ye, or where I talk on a subject with lots of great editing and research. They take a lot of time, a lot of resources, um, so you buying the calendars helps support what I'm doing. And I'm very happy with building a stoic community. I think that's the ultimate... Um, privilege of what I do. We're building a stoic community on Instagram, on YouTube, everywhere. And it's so good. I see it building and it's just incredible. So thank you and I hope you have a great day.